In my last video, I talked about why every beginner programmer should start building their capstone project as soon as possible. And if you haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. But if you don't know what a capstone project is, it's, it's a term that I took from my university where we built this capstone project that combines all the skills that we learned that semester into this one final project. And that kind of project is really useful, especially for learning how to code. And so that's why I recommend beginners to start programming that capstone project as soon as possible. In this video, I want to give more practical advice. So I'm going to go over six steps that you can take to start planning your capstone project. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to go over an overarching tip that you should keep in mind as you're going about this plan. So my name is Henrik and I'm here to help you learn the foundations of software development. So let's get started. But before we begin, I'd like to mention that I do have a free workshop for you. It's called my Capstone Project Workshop. And in that workshop, I go over three secrets to coding your own capstone project in just three months. Now, why did I create this workshop? The most common goal that I get from people who apply to my one-on-one -on -one programming mentorship program is to, quote, be more proficient at creating projects. You and I both know that learning how to code is more than just memorizing code syntax. It's about applying your coding skills to real world projects that make you feel confident and capable. A lot of new programmers tell me they struggle with turning what they've learned into something practical. And many feel overwhelmed trying to go beyond tutorials to build their own thing. So if this sounds like you, you can download this workshop in the link in the description. And if you download it and watch it and pay attention to what it says, then you'll definitely build a good foundation to your software development journey. All right, step number one, and this is probably the most obvious step, and that is to come up with the idea for your project. And this is this might be the hardest part of the planning process because every person is unique, and so everyone will have their own capstone project. And so you have to think about your background, your the, the all the things that you've been learning in the past couple of months, all the skills that you picked up, and then come up with a project that you can build that will showcase all of those skills. And if you're a beginner, you probably, I would recommend that you build a console application and a console application is just an application that you can run in a terminal and then it's just text based and then you have menus and then that's how the user can put some input into the console application and I'll go over this in the, in the latter steps but I recommend building a console application. If you've never built a project or a program or application before, then I do recommend that you start with those classic programs like the to-do list application or a Sudoku solver or a tic-tac-toe game or a budget tracker. I usually recommend that you do something more practical like the budget tracker or like a personal finance application. And that's because those are more practical and those are something, those are some examples of projects you can put on your resume that employers will care about. If you put like to do list application or a tic tac toe game on your resume, I don't think employers will be impressed by it. And they might even look at it and be like, why did this person put these projects in their written their resume? So I would recommend that you move, you eventually move on to more unique projects things that will intrigue employers and so it will be really specific to your current situation and so think about your current life what are the things that you need in your life something that would really help that you could automate in your life go and try and build those kinds of applications for me some applications that i built recently that i like to talk about are my devo app and my options app so for my Devo app, I'm a Christian, so I wanted to have an application that will help me with my devotional life, with my time with the Lord. And so what I do, what I did in that application is I would have like a Bible verse or a Bible chapter that I would read for the day and then have some prayer requests of friends, family, and then some a memory verse and just some, some prayer items to pray about for during my time with the Lord. And so that's the devotional app. And then for the options app, I created an app that will help me tr help me track and manage my options contracts. And so there was a lot of contracts that I was doing and it was overwhelming and I was originally doing it in an Excel spreadsheet or a Google Sheet spreadsheet. But then I realized it would be nicer, it would be a lot cooler if I had an actual application that could help me manage those options contracts. And so you can see these kinds of projects are projects that are readily applicable or practical in my current life. 
and so it was really exciting for me to build them and build them over time and I always looked forward to building and, and work on those projects and this is something to highlight about your idea for your capstone project you want it you want it to be a, a project that you get excited about so that's the first one come up with the idea for your project now the second one is to decide which programming language you're going to use and if you're a beginner i recommend you just stick to one programming language obviously if you have a more complex application or program you can have multiple programming languages but if you're a beginner just stick to one programming language and preferably you stick to the one that you've been coding in for the past couple of months because you want to showcase your skills right you want to be able to put those skills into practice I don't like it when beginners they learn some programming language for a couple of months and then they build a new project but they use a different language that they haven't coded in that doesn't make sense because you're gonna forget all of the things that you've learned in the in that programming language so stick to that programming language that you've been working on and build a project with that programming language now if there isn't a programming language that you can think of right now that you've been focusing on the past couple of months or maybe you're in the beginning of your programming journey then I recommend you either code this application or this project in either C or C sharp. And I say C sharp because C sharp is a very fundamental language. It's a very simple language. And if you learn C sharp, um, that's a very good introduction into software development. But I highly recommend that you learn or you program in C. And that's because C was my experience. C was the first programming language that I learned. And then I was able to pick up other programming languages because of that background I had in C. And C is a legendary programming language. It was a popular programming language for many, many years. And a lot of the higher level programming languages like C Sharp, C++, Python, JavaScript, Java, all of these more popular programming languages, I guess, those have some sort of connection to C. They were inspired by C and even Python, the interpreter was programmed in C. And so a lot of these higher level programming languages, they had some influence from C. And so I think that's how I was able to pick up all these programming languages. When I went to my first job, I had to learn C++ and then they made me look code in Python and then Java, JavaScript, and then when I went to my second job, I learned C Sharp. So I was able to pick up all these different programming languages because I had a good foundation in C. And so if you're a beginner and you want to code your first pro programming project or capstone project, then I recommend you do it in C. And the reason why C is such a good programming language to learn is because it really forces you to think the way that the computers are thinking. So for example, it really makes you, it forces you to pay close attention to how you use your data types. And another thing too is that it forces you to think carefully how you allocate memory for your data. And so as you learn how to code in this way, it gives you good coding habits, good coding practices, and it really makes you an overall better programmer in the long run. Something else I wanted to point out when it comes to choosing your programming language, oftentimes the application or project that you're trying to build will often have a programming language that's associated with it. So for example, if you want to build an Android application, then you would code that in Java. If you want to build a website or web application, then you would code that in JavaScript. And then if you want to do some machine learning, then you would do that in Python and so on and so forth. If you want to build a robotics project, or robotics capstone project or if you want to work with an arduino then maybe you'll code it in c and so you have to pay attention which application you're trying to build and find the best programming language that's suited for that and that's why i was able to learn a lot of different programming languages because i was building a lot of different kinds of applications and research projects so i had to learn these other programming languages in order to do that if you've been learning a particular programming language the past couple of months, then you should build an application that is often suited or often paired with that programming language. But if you're a beginner, then I always recommend that you start with some console applications. And that's how I started. I built a lot of console applications first, and then I was able to move on to other more complicated capstone projects. All right, third step is to decide what are the main features of your program. So for my devotional app, 
the one of the main features was to have a Bible chapter that I would read for the day and it would automatically give me the next chapter to read. So that's one feature. Another feature is to have uh, the prayer request for the day. So I would have a, a tab that would where I could store people's prayer requests of my friends and family. And then it would give me, it would random, randomly give me every day some people to pray for. And then that application, I would be able to see who I could pray for. And then another one was I wanted to be able to journal in my application so I could journal some thoughts and do process some events that happened in my life. So that's another feature that I wanted to have in that application. And then I also wanted to have a memory verse to, to memorize at the end of my devotional time or just to um, refresh my memory. So that's another feature. And then for my options application, I wanted the, one of the fe major features was to show all the contracts that I had at that time, and then also be able to modify different contracts or update some contracts. If, an, if a contract expired, then I wanted to be able to update that in my application. And then I also wanted to see what was my performance like? How did I perform last month or the previous month? And so that's another feature that I wanted to have for that options application. And then if you're maybe you're going to do a budget application, you want to be able to categorize your spending through maybe through your credit card or just you wanted to be able to allocate how much money you're making into different uh, categories for your budget for the month. Then those are some features that you need to consider for your application or for your capstone project. So decide what main features your program is going to have. It would be nice to have like a plan where you document all the features and then this will come in handy when when it comes to splitting out those different features into mini tasks that you can work on. All right now for your fourth step draft out how your user is going to interact with your program and so this is going to have some overlap with the third step so in this fourth step though you want to be more clear or explicit how the user is going to interact with your application there's going to be if there's going to be a menu maybe for the to-do list application you want to have a menu with four options create read update and delete for these different tasks in your application and maybe you want your application to ask the user for their name. And so you have to think about all of these things, how the application is going to ask or prompt the user. Another thing to consider is how is the user going to give data to the program? Is the user going to give a file and then the program will parse that file? Or is the user going to upload their data somehow to the program? Or also think about how is the program going to save the data of the user? Is the program going to save data at all? If it does save data, is it going to save it to a file and then read from that file at the beginning of at the startup of that pro application? Or is there going to be a database of sorts that the that the application is going to use to store the user's data or to save the user's data? So and that's another thing to think about for this step. Our fifth step is to plan out what kind of data structures your project is going to have. If your project is going to have a user that logs in, then you need a structure that captures that user information. Or maybe for that to-do list application, you want to implement a linked list so that you can have a list of different tasks and then you can have a struct that's dedicated for each task. And then maybe that task is going to have a title a description and then a status if it's completed or if it's uncompleted or if it's incomplete then you need to have that data structure for that task so start thinking about what kind of structures you would need to implement for your capstone project our sixth and final step is to take everything that i just mentioned and break it down into smaller development tasks and these smaller development tasks are going to be your step seven step eight step nine step 10 etc etc and so you can start thinking about okay what is the first feature i'm going to implement and then break that down into smaller tasks and usually you want to you want to build something or you want to code something that has something that's meaningful for your overall project. So for example, for me, for my devotional app, that would have been, I wanted to be able to be given the, the Bible chapter that I'm going to read for that day. And then that was really fun because I could already see, I could already start using the application the next day because it would give me the chapters that I'm going to read. 
And so that was my first task. That was the, when I split up my project into different tasks, that was my first feature that I implemented. And then the next feature I wanted to implement was a way to input some people's prayer requests. So that was the first, fe that was the next thing that I worked on. And then I worked on how to choose those tasks or choose those prayer requests at random. So it if I had 10 friends in my database, then I wanted to be able to pull three prayer requests at random. So that was the next thing that I worked on. And then the last thing I worked on was to bring those three prayer requests into the main dashboard so that I could see those prayer requests. And then after I got that working, I could start praying for my friends every day. So I was reading and then praying for my friends and family every day. So I was already enjoying the application and I was getting excited on all the features I was adding to it. And then I added the memory verse feature where it would give me a memory verse, uh, one, one memory verse a day. Of course, I had to come up with a way to input the memory verses that I wanted to memorize. So that was another thing, that was another tab that I worked on. And so you can see, you just build your program incrementally. And so that's the main idea behind breaking down your development plan into smaller tasks. You wanna work on your program incrementally and meaningfully so that you stay passionate and stay motivated at building and finishing your capstone project. And now speaking of building incrementally, this is my overarching tip that I wanted to share with you, and that is to use Git. And so if you don't, if you've never used Git, I recommend you start using it now. And Git is such a helpful tool for developers. Once you start learning how to use Git, you can't code without using Git at all because Git is so helpful in terms of helping you have version control over your programs. And so Git, just learn how to use Git, create a GitHub account. And then whenever you make those incremental changes or those development tasks, once you make those incremental changes in your program, you commit them to your, to your program so that you can save your progress. And then as you're constantly developing new features, if you break a, an old feature, you can always do a diff between your current version and that version and see what is the difference between when it was working before and now, now that it's broken. And then you can easily see which lines of code contributed to that feature breaking. And so I've made a lot of videos about Git if you want to learn about Git, so be sure to check those out. All right, so those are the six steps that I recommend for coming up with the plan for your capstone project. The first one is to come up with the idea for your project. The second one is to decide which programming language you're going to use. The third one is to decide what are the main features that your program is going to have. Fourth is to draft out how the user is going to interact with your program. Fifth is to plan out the data structures you're going to use. And then last but not least is to break your program into smaller tasks. And of course, use Git as you're doing this development and make a document on your plan for this capstone project. When you have a document, you can organize all of your thoughts in there and you can even put these steps in that document so you have a you have an overall understanding of what your capstone project is all about. And so I'm really excited to hear what kind of capstone projects you guys are going to make. Please let me know in the comments section what is that capstone project that you're going to build? And if you have any questions or any if you need any help coming up with an idea for your Capstan project, let me know in the comment section and I'll try to help you out there. Like I mentioned earlier, I have a free workshop for you, my Capstone project workshop. And in that workshop, I go over three secrets to coding your own Capstone project in just three months. So if you want to become more proficient at creating your own projects, you want to move on from these tutorials and create your own projects, then be sure to check the link in the description and watch my coding workshop today. All right, that's it for this week's video. I hope it really helped you out and gave you some practical tips for planning out your next capstone project. And if it did help you out, please like and share and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any other questions, feel free to let me know in the comment section and I'll be sure to answer you there. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.